Church. I uh, just want to remind everybody to be faithful our tithes and our offering. We are in a time of Christmas for Christ also, so we want to continue to remember this. Amen. Um, that's it for announcements this evening. Uh, Sunday's coming, um, so let's remember Sunday's coming. Amen. A um, couple, uh, uh, several prayer requests we want to take before the Lord. We want to continue to remember Sister Dramus, uh, Sister Kimmel, Sister Dora, Sister Charmaine, and uh, Sister Pat. We also want to continue to remember uh, Brother Doty and uh, Brother Jason. Um, uh, my sister Sue, amen, and also remember the Smith family with the, with the passing of Matt Smith. We're going to continue to lift up uh, um, brother and sister Smith and the Smith family, amen. Um, I believe that's it for um, a now, uh, prayer requests that I have this evening. If um, if you have other prayer requests, if you just cry them out before God right now, take them to the throne room, amen, and God is faithful to take care of our needs. Can you stand with me as we go before the Lord in prayer? Lord, we come before you right now, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, we love you. We praise you. There is none like you. Lord, you are the great I am. And Lord, we were bringing these requests to you right now, Jesus. Lord, you'd reach down, Jesus. Touch them, Lord. Heal them, Lord. Lord, we need you to take care of every one of these needs we brought before you, Lord God. Lord, there's great testimonies, Lord God. And we're going to praise you and we're going to worship you. We're going to give you the glory for them, Lord. But Lord, we need you to continue to move, Lord God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Continue to touch and heal. Lord, be with our country, Lord God. Lord, quench the violence, Lord God. Lord, loose your spirit on this country, Lord God, and pour out for a mighty revival, Lord God. Lord, we pray, Lord, you grow our church, save these cities, mature your people, bless and increase our finances, give us a bigger and better building, and Lord, send laborers in the field. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord, church, and have a blessed and happy Thanksgiving. God bless you all. Lord's presence is here right now. You can feel it in the atmosphere as you lift your hands and worship Him. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord, for visiting us today. Hallelujah, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. This next song is really simple for you sing. Broken hearts are restored in 
Praise the Lord, church. God bless you. Let's all stand together while you're standing. Thank you to everybody. Thank you, Brother Ron, for the prayer and the announcements. Thank to all of you. I'm just, pastor is just a blessed pastor and a thankful one. It's just Thanksgiving, and we are, Sister Dramus and I are definitely, deeply thankful. I want to draw your attention tonight to something that I have been praying about. As a matter of fact, each and every year, I feel to go into some of this, talking about Thanksgiving. As a matter of fact, my, it's going to be a little different. My lesson tonight is uh, things that you may not know about Thanksgiving. Because we are living in a time that's trying to inch Thanksgiving out. As a matter of fact, I've already had somebody to tell me in public, in a, a commercial setting, Merry Christmas. They said Merry Christmas, and I said Happy Thanksgiving first, and then Merry Christmas. The thing is that I want to talk to you about the aspect and the endeavorment to keep this Thanksgiving mission alive in our families, in our individual families. In Deuteronomy, I want to read you a scripture while you're standing, and uh, I, I want to share this scripture with you. Listen, to, this is a scripture that unless you read your Bible through every year, this is a scripture that you will miss, that you just won't deliberately be turning to. It's in, in Deuteronomy 8 and 10. When thou hast eaten and art full... Then thou shalt bless the Lord thy God for the good land which he hath given thee. Now, of course, if you'll get the concept during the times that this was written and given, that it was imperative that you had to have good property. You had to have property that yielded good uh, produce and good seed and, and good vegetables. And it was important that you had land, good land. Thankful. What made it good? God's blessings. What makes your God your job good? God's blessings. What makes your job good and favorable? The blessings of the Lord. We want God's blessings and favor on our life and in our life. Things that you may not know concerning and or know about Thanksgiving. Numerous, numerous nations celebrate. Thanksgiving holiday. Many Americans consider Thanksgiving to be the one true family American holiday. Many do. It marks the beginning of our holiday season, a period that lasts into Christmas and through New Year's, uh, the New Year's Day. But many nations celebrate a Thanksgiving holiday, including Canada, Germany, Japan, Can Canadians' Thanksgiving is influenced in many ways by the American version of the holiday. <clears throat> George Washington was the first American president to call for an official Thanksgiving holiday. Congress called, now listen, Congress called for several days of, for Thanksgiving during the Revolutionary Era and the year shortly thereafter. The government, Congress, called for not one day, but for several days to be celebrated in this mindset of thanksgiving. These days were emphasized, now hear this, these days were emphasized by the need for prayer and repentance. The nation was being developed. It was winning its wars. It was fighting its enemies. That was holding it back. You get to picture what's holding your family back. What's, what's trying to hinder your children and your family. What is stopping us from being another great generation? Something is holding us back. And what held them and helped them and what set them forward was prayer and repentance. In 1789, George Washington proclaimed November the 26th to be the first official Thanksgiving holiday. For some, Thanksgiving is considered, now this is our society. For some, Thanksgiving is considered a secular holiday. But hear me, Thanksgiving is deeply rooted 
and biblical principle. Abraham Lincoln made Thanksgiving an ongoing federal holiday. 1863 was perhaps the most important year, some say the most important year of the Civil War and the Emancipation Proclamation was issued on the first day of the year, and the battles of Gettysburg and Vicksburg were fought during the summer. So President Lincoln called for a Thanksgiving holiday to be celebrated on the last Thursday in November, hearkening back to Washington's first Thanksgiving holiday at the same time of the year. It has been celebrated annually Every year. Listen. <coughs> Listen to pastor. While the clouds in the air was full of smoke and fire from bombs being shelled and exploding. Fire and crackling of gunfire while it ripped through the human body of our own American citizens as we fought one another. Blood was shed and blood was flowing but during that time, that hot season of war in America, Thanksgiving was being proclaimed and it was being ratified and it was being kept. Thanksgiving is deeply, deeply rooted in biblical principles, folks. The scriptures are replete with the references of the place Thanksgiving holds in worship. Psalms 95, 100 and 105 commands, hear me, commands for believers to give thanks to God. In, in Psalms 106, Colossians 3, Ephesians 5, and, and 1 Thessalonians 5, there's a reflection. Don't, don't overlook this. I, I hope you're listening. I hope you're not walking around in your home while pastor is teaching here. I hope you're listening intently. Hear me. This is a, these scriptures are demanding an, an input of cultivating a disposition of thanksgiving. Cultivating a dis, disposition. Let me ask you, who is it in your life, in your family, that has convinced you that you don't have to pay attention in, in, uh, in Wednesday night service? Who? Who is, how, how has that happened? Who is it and how has it happened that some of you are not back in the church with the body of Christ yet? How is that? I've got a burden. I've got a burden. I am thankful for what God is doing and how God has brought us through. This pandemic that we're dealing with is the first real big, big thing in, in my lifetime that I've had to deal with, that I've had to motivate a people and the congregation through. But hear me, this is the tip of the iceberg. And God, listen, it's going to be said, and I'm going to say it now, that the people needs to say, the Lord is with us. Yes, he is. The Lord is with us. The pilgrims celebrated the first Thanksgiving in America. This is what we understand. Thanksgiving calls back an autumn harvest feast celebrated by the pilgrims who colonized Plymouth Plantation. Uh, the local Indian tribe of that time, the, uh, in 1621, these Indians helped the pilgrims to survive by sharing. Hear me. They helped the pilgrims to survive by sharing food with them during the, the first winter in, in New England. Now, Americans have talked and thought and prayed and fasted and worshiped about this first Thanksgiving. And now, look how it is changing. We don't, if we're not careful, we're going to change it out of, uh, of tune. We're going to change it out of sight and out of mind. We as families in Apostolic Faith Church, I, I don't pastor anybody else. I pastor you. I, I'm not, I can't preach to everybody, but if you've tuned in tonight, if you tuned in on YouTube and you're listening virtually and you're hearing what I'm saying, don't, look, we need to put some emphasis on this family holiday. It's imperative. In, in, in a book, Robert Tracy McKenzie shows in his book, Thanksgiving, the meaning of Thanksgiving has evolved over time. First of all, Americans mostly forgot about the pilgrims and those Indians uh, over 200 years ago. I've almost forgotten about 
the pill. You know, the, you remember those people that had those big, funny-looking buckles on their shoes in the Indians? How often do we talk about those people, those Native Americans that, that was a big part of saving lives, that harsh, horrible winter? From the mid-1800s on, Americans look back to the first Thanksgiving. They, they look back, looking. if we're not careful, we're not looking back at all. If we're not careful, look, look, my hat, my hat is off to America and, and the, the making Christmas early. People need money. Businesses are, are on t teetering, going more, going out of, building, out of business. And we don't want that to happen. Let's, let's have a big Christmas. Let's have a great New Year. But let's have an awesome Thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Thanksgiving as defining the moment of America is Thanksgiving. Giving. By the early 20th century, the pilgrims were considered Americans' founders, and it's important to keep them there, to remember their part and their sacrifice. The pilgrims themselves became the most important icon for the real meaning of Thanksgiving. But listen, it's more than just a picture of a pilgrim or a, a turkey. It's, it is a cultivating of a worship of Thanksgiving. Keeping God alive while we come together and celebrate and are thankful for this Thanksgiving. Every year, the president of the excuse me of the United States issues a listen a Thanksgiving proclamation. Every year since the Civil War era, every U.S. president has followed the example of Washington and Lincoln by issuing an annual Thanksgiving. Day a proclamation. You can go online and view every one of these. They've got them all recorded in their own record of these Thanksgiving. Reading through the proclamations shows how the presidents regularly reinterpreted the pilgrims as model of Americans who were offered and who offered moral, moral lifestyles. In this <clears throat> this history that we are dealing with, what happens to history? It happens with people who are repeating it. What happens to the history of the church? Thank God it's written in the word of God. No matter what, we are remembering it. We're studying it. And we have, we have opportunity to keep teaching, to keep preaching it and not change it. Just leave it alone like it is. It's good just like it is. The president also pardons a turkey. Listen, you may not realize this, but the president of the United States every year pardons a turkey every year at Thanksgiving. There are many stories of president pardoning turkeys in honor of Thanksgiving, dating at way back, dating so far. Look, Ronald Reagan offered the first official pardon in 1987. In 1989, President George H.W. Bush made the turkey pardoning, turkey pardoning an annual tradition. Most years, the pardoned turkey is donated to a petting zoo or a farm. Did you know that? Listen, we are pardoning turkeys and we... Uh, I don't want to bring this in, but just l let me tell you, if you're not praying about aborting babies, if, uh, babies that are being aborted, we need to pray for people on both sides of the fence. We need to pray for those that are doing it and those that are uh, against it. What we need to do is, praying, is pray that our country comes together for a single moment, for a single act of morality. We need good morals. We need morals that supersede the sins and the lust of what the world has to offer. We need that. Listen at this. According to the Turkey website, there is as much 88% of Americans eat turkey every Thanksgiving. Around 46 million turkeys are eaten at Thanksgiving, which is about twice as many turkeys as in eaten at Christmas. 46 million. Over 730 million pounds of turkey is consumed annually around Thanksgiving. 250 million turkeys are raised in the U.S. in any given year. You think we need to do away with Thanksgiving? It's a money-making job business too. We need to keep it on the market. We need to keep it in the calendar. Thanksgiving is deeply rooted in biblical principles. Now hear me. 
The scriptures are replete with references to the place and, and the object, if you don't mind me saying it like that, to the act of thanksgiving worship. Hallelujah. Worship. This is, important. this is what is supposed to be going on in your home when church is virtual. This is what, if you're not careful, you miss the opportunity to cultivate an atmosphere of worship. Who is it that's taking that opportunity away? What is it that is destroying each and every Wednesday night? And when people get so busy, they're not involved in Wednesday night service. Listen, I remember, look, I remember in 15 years, I remember when our Wednesday night service, our Wednesday night congregation was every bit as big as our Sunday con congregation. We need to get back there. Come on, folks, we need to get back there. Even if it's virtual or not, we need to get back there. Hallelujah. I'm calling everybody under the sound of my voice. Let's be thankful for what God has done for us. Let's be thankful for what the Lord, the sacrifice that he made. If he can go to the cross, I can go to church. If he can go to the cross, I can have church in my home virtually and encourage my family to worship, to pray, and enjoy a message and a lesson. I, that, that that can happen. The scriptures are replete in Psalms 95, 100, and 105. Commands us to believe and to worship God. Let me give you, as I bring this to a close tonight, let me give you a couple of ideas of the scriptures in Isaiah 12 and 1. In that day, ye shall say, in that day, ye shall say, I give thanks to you, Lord. You love him? Is there a day that you say, today, God, I give thanks to you. I wake up every morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be exceedingly glad in it. We had some crazy things happen. One thing after the other this morning when we were kicking things off for a brand new day. We were putting things together and, and mapping out our day and stepping forward. Look, I make choices in my life. I don't just let life and in, in, in the hours of the day tick back and make my choices. I make choices. Sister Doremus and I were talking about these crazy things, but I said this, hear me when I tell you nothing that takes place as these crazy things are happening, decides what kind of day I'm going to have. Because this is the day that the Lord has made. Sister Doremus and I, we just plow right through. We just step right on beyond. We just make, hey, there's, it's no step for a stepper, hallelujah. But it's a believer situation. I am a believer. What about you? Are you a believer? Are you thankful for what God has done for you? Are you thankful for what the Lord has done for your family? Are you thankful for the Lord Jesus Christ? In that day, you shall say, I give thanks to the Lord. Isaiah 38 and 19, just give you a little paraphrase. Here it comes. The living, are you hearing me? The living, the living, only the living can give thanks to you, Lord. Only the living. Listen to what it says at the end of this verse, just paraphrasing. The fathers relate to their children your acts of grace. This is what's got to happen. This is what's got to take place. Children, come in here. Dad wants to talk to you. Mom, get the kids in here. Honey, come in here. It's just me and you tonight. Come in here. Let's talk about the goodness of God. Let's talk about his grace. Let's talk about it. What's going to happen this Thanksgiving when you sit down at the table and everybody is together, if they will? I hope you have better luck than God is having at church. I hope people come together to eat a lot better than they come to church. I guarantee you, everybody will eat Thanksgiving. Everybody. Did you, you know there's going to be a lot more money spent on alcohol Christmas than there is on turkey? But hear me when I tell you, I am thankful for Thanksgiving. I am thankful for Christmas. I thank God for Easter, for Easter, the Thanksgiving and Christmas, for the New Year's. I'm thankful for every holiday that we have an opportunity to enjoy one another and to enjoy the God of our salvation. Would you stand with me right now?
this today, 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 today you're going to have a chance. Tomorrow, if you live, and thank God, I hopefully in Jesus' name you will, you'll have another chance. You will to give thanks unto the Lord. Only the living. Only the living. Only the living can give thanks to you, Lord. Only the living. And are you those kind of parents that relate to your children the goodness of God? Let's raise our hands and love him all over in every home, in every home. Have a great Thanksgiving, would you? Have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Have, a, have an encouraged Thanksgiving. It's going to be okay. God's going to keep maneuvering us. We're, we're getting, COVID is getting closer and closer to us, but God is ever so near. Father, we love you. We thank you for your goodness and your mercy. We give you thanks. We do. We are alive and above ground, and I give you thanks. I give you praise and honor, and I glorify you, almighty, mighty God. You are the only true living God. There is no God beside you. There is no God. All other gods are are fake. All other gods are man-made. You and you alone are the true living God. We thank you for your name. We thank you for a name that's above every name. We thank you for a name that we can be baptized in, that name of Jesus. We thank you for your spirit that you fill us with the Holy Ghost. We thank you, Lord, that the opportunity as we are filled with your spirit, God, the tongues of fire burst, burst forward. We thank you for the fire in the anointing of the Holy Ghost and fire. In Jesus' name, we give you thanks. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you. Lift your hands in the room and cry out to the Lord in this place. Cry out. Whoa. They say this mountain can't be moved. They say these chains will never break. But they don't know you like we do There is power in your name We've heard that there is no way through We've heard that tide will never change They haven't seen what you can do there is power in your name So much power in your name Through the immovable Break the unbreakable God we believe God we believe